Hey, it's John at Tinderbox Arts. Very often when I'm responding to people in a motorcycle forum, I'll mention vacuum leaks, and not everybody knows what I'm talking about, so I thought I'd make this video to explain what the vacuum is and what the leaks mean and how to check for them. So this particular bike you're looking at in front of you is an R1200 RT, and I have the fairing off because I'm doing some work on it. And I have another example in my garage uh, that I can reference, which is the Triumph Bonneville. Any vehicle, cars and trucks included, with a gasoline engine can be subject to a vacuum leak. And there are many places where vacuum leaks can happen. But what do we mean by the vacuum itself? Well, gasoline engines are powered by a piston or pistons. And uh, as that piston is on the intake stroke, it is going down in the chamber and it's pulling in air and fuel. Well, that's it's suction, if you want to think of it that way, and it creates a vacuum. So on this example here, we have an air box and we have air available coming in here. We have a throttle body, which is where the air is mixed with the fuel, okay? And then it goes into an intake area and into the piston chamber on the intake stroke. That suction or that vacuum, if you want to think of it that way, um, is pulling that air in and the fuel in with it. If you have a carburetor, uh, it's the same idea, it's just a different way of getting the fuel to uh, the piston chamber. Here on the Bonneville, same idea, there's an air chamber under here, got a throttle body, a little boot right here, and a little intake uh, manifold, I'll call it, and into uh, through the intake valves and of course into the piston chamber, so the same idea. Now whether you have a carburetor or a throttle body with fuel injection, there is an intended air fuel mix, whether that is designed into the carburetor the way it works or whether a computer is controlling it on the fly, it doesn't really matter. There's an intended mix there. And when you mess with that mix, you're gonna have problems. Very often if you have a vacuum leak, you're gonna see difficult starting or you may find an idle that is either rough or uh, surging in a way or just not steady. And very often a vacuum leak is the cause of that. So when we say a vacuum leak, what we mean is air that is not intended uh, to go into the piston chamber is getting there because you may have air leaking through a boot, leaking through a hose like this, uh, leaking through mechanical areas, so you can even have a crack or if you have a butterfly valve, for example, there may be uh, a looseness in the uh, shaft that allows air in. So there's all sorts of ways that air can get into this area where it's not intended. And that changes the air fuel mixture in a way that's not intended. So there are four primary ways that you can check for vacuum leaks. The first one, and anybody can do this certainly, is a visual check. You really want to get your head right in here and just make sure that you don't see any potential areas where there might be a leak. Now, if you do have vacuum hoses, which are really not that common anymore, but if you do have them, uh, you can look on the hose itself, which is rubber, for any cracks. Uh, where it meets the port down here, where it slides onto that port, you want to make sure that isn't loose, and you'll check the other end as well. You want to check that entire hose, because air could be sucked in anywhere along there. The other common place is areas like this, where there's a rubber boot connecting this throttle body uh, you know, to the rest of the engine. Now this side, we don't really care too much about. I mean, we don't want it to leak, but it's not gonna cause a vacuum leak in the sense that this is where air is coming from. So this doesn't matter as far as a vacuum leak. We don't want air getting past the air filter. That's a different problem though. But on this side, the rubber boot could certainly be leaking. And again, we wanna look for cracks or looseness if there is some kind of band like this that holds the rubber boot in place, we want to make sure that's not loose. Another thing we want to look for closely are um, areas like this or this right here where there could be a gasket or where a sensor or a butterfly valve or anything like that uh, could be leaking through this housing here. So if those gaskets leak, um, visually, it may not be easy to see, and we're going to try some other things in order to, uh, to test for that, but visually, you can look for cracks in a sensor. Um, it's not common, but it is possible for the aluminum housing here to have a crack in it or something like that. Uh, so just visually, you want to check things out and make sure there isn't a problem. Now, on this particular bike, that's not too difficult. If I look at my Triumph Bonneville, it's also pretty much out in the open. However, there are definitely other bikes where this is not so easy to do. Uh, if you have you know, all of this stuff hidden under a gas tank, for example, it may be difficult to do a visual inspection. You may have to pull the gas tank off 
uh, and get a little bit deeper. Now the second method for checking for vacuum leaks is very old and works especially well if you have hoses like this. So what you're going to do is start the engine, let it idle in the sense that it is stable as it can be, and then you're just going to take some needle nose pliers like this and pinch off the hose fairly close to the port. If you can hear the idle change when you pinch that off, that tells you that there's probably a vacuum leak that you need to check further. Now, if you have boots like this, you can't use needle nose pliers, but you may be able to manipulate the boot, you know, move it around a little bit if possible. Same thing with these sensors. So you can physically manipulate what's there, the boot, the um, hoses, the sensors, whatever it is, and just see if the idle changes when you move them around or when you wiggle them. If you do hear a change, that's definitely not right and you need to look further. On this Bonneville, you can actually tighten those clamps and that might be something you can check as well to see that those are tight. If they're not, you could have air leaking in through this rubber boot. Now the third method is probably the most useful. We're going to use a spray. It might be starting fluid. It might be like a throttle body cleaner. It might be a carburetor cleaner. And we want to use that little straw so we can direct this spray very precisely. And what we need to do is start the bike up so that it's running and idling as best as it can. And we want to spray closely in some of these areas to check to see if the idle changes. So if I take my spray and I just spray right in here while it's idling and I hear that idle change, it might be 100 RPM or something like that, might be more even, then I know that air is getting in here because this is changing the air fuel mixture and causing the idle to change. Same thing, and this is especially useful in areas like this where a gasket might be leaking or a sensor might have a crack in it. And if you can spray right in here or spray right in here and you hear that idle change, then you know there's something up. You can also use it on hoses, but for that it's going to be most effective like right here at the port. Now there are several caveats about using sprays. It's not going to affect the engine itself, but it could affect the oxygen sensors uh, depending on what type you use. So you want to make sure whatever you're using for the spray uh, is safe for oxygen sensors. Starting fluid generally is, throttle body cleaner basically is for most uh, bikes. If you have a carbureted bike, you may not even have an oxygen sensor, in which case it won't really matter. But you just want to make sure whatever bike you're using this on, you're not going to screw up a sensor. The other thing to be careful about is that some of these cleaners and such can take off paint. So if you're getting really crazy with a spray, you just want to avoid painted surfaces so you don't uh, screw that up. Now you don't need to douse the thing with the spray. Just a few squirts here and there is usually enough uh, to induce and change in the RPM. So you don't have to saturate it, just give it some squirts in very you know, small areas like this so you can see exactly where it's going. And you'll hear that change in the RPM. And the fourth method, which is only going to work on modern fuel injected bikes with a computer, is to use whatever device you need to to connect to that computer and using software you're going to look at the live data while the engine is running. Now, if you have a vacuum leak on a modern bike, the computer is going to try to make adjustments because you're going to have probably at least two cylinders, maybe three, maybe four. Um, and if one of those is leaking, or even two or three of them is leaking, the computer will try to make adjustments in the fuel trim to you know, make the air fuel mixture what it's supposed to be. It's going to be monitoring that air fuel mixture with the oxygen sensor uh, and other means. And if it sees a problem, it tries to make adjustments. It only has so much adjustment range, however. Uh, so once it gets to its maximum adjustment that it can make, then you're going to start seeing problems. And you may see problems before that, too, if, uh, if you're cautious about your diagnosing. So using the software, if you attach in this case, the GS911 or whatever device you need to, in order to connect to the computer. And you look at the software with the live data and you see one particular cylinder has fuel trim that it's, you know, it's really trying to adjust by adding more fuel. Uh, then you know maybe there's something going on with that particular cylinder and you can check more closely using maybe some of the other methods to see if there is a vacuum leak. So I think vacuum leaks are often overlooked in modern bikes because a lot of people just focus on the sensors and the computer and just kind of ignore the basics, which is that you have air and fuel trying to get into that cylinder. And if you have a leak, it's going to cause a problem, especially noticeable on idle.